folks, welcome to this special edition of Mr. Ivan Young, he says. I'm actually at Barmore at my brother's house. He's on vacation, so I'm house sitting. <laughs> How are you doing today, Mr. Kirk? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. You know, just enjoying the day. It's a little hot out here, but I'm still enjoying it. Okay, good, good. So let's go ahead and jump into some topics here. So one of the things I talked to you about, or I told you about, was on Saturday, and I picked that couple up. And uh, apparently, uh, she was going to a boat. So I invited her out in the boat, and she was leaving her man behind. So I was dropping him off at a bar. Your thoughts on that? Because I was just like, eh, something's not quite right here, but not my business. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, I don't know what that was all about. I mean, whatever they're into, that's their own personal business. But if he got dropped off at a bar and she got dropped off at a boat, that relationship is doomed. Yeah, I have to agree because I'm pretty sure that if the roles were reversed and he was going to boat without his lady, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there'd be some issues there. So, oh you yeah, know. oh yeah, without a doubt. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. so uh, I'm glad I'm not. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm definitely glad I'm not in that situation. Woo. Oh, yeah. I mean, that makes two of us. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I mean, you're going to go out on the boat without your significant other? Yeah, it sounds like there's uh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> yeah. As an old co-worker used to say, do what you do, champ. <laughs> <laughs> right, how about that? <laughs> how about that? So, summer's winding down. Um, football season's coming up, so... How do you think your team's going to do? Which, uh, my son's high school team or Washington? No, Washington. <laughs> eight and eight per usual. I'm not expecting anything new out of this team. I, I, I'm not okay. going to make any scary predictions. They, you know, they're rebuilding with a new quarterback. They maintained some of the uh, uh, the guys that were producing last year and stuff like that. But the, he's got to get Carson Wentz has to get used to a whole new team. So uh, eight and eight. Carson Wentz has never been the same after the injury. We had him in Philadelphia on the Super Bowl run, but um, you know, after the injury, you know, he's never been the same. And so people try to attribute that to, well, maybe he goes back to because the Frank Wright was his offensive coordinator, who's was the head coach now at Indianapolis, and that didn't work out either. So. Yeah, yeah, that that was pretty bad last year, the way he was on. It, it wasn't like it was unceremonious, but he played really bad in those last couple of games, and they should have been in the playoffs. All they had to do was, I think, beat Jacksonville in that last yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't remember, you know, which team it was, but, yeah, that should have been a that should have been a gimme. But then again, it's pro football, so there are no gimmies. <laughs> Indeed, and, you know, he coming to Washington, I mean – we are not easy on quarterbacks. You know, the protection has been suspect, you know, for a long, long time when it comes to quarterbacks. So, right. you know, we, I, I know we've shell-shocked a few of them where they just never played well in the NFL after they left this team. So, uh, they got this whole team has a lot to work on it. And then with all the stuff that was going on in there, you know, in a, in a corporate office there, they, they got some issues going on. I yeah. Got- yeah, I want to do an episode of that one these days because I'm pretty sure – there's going to be a lot more coming out behind that, so. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, this team's got a, uh, got a little bit to work through, but they have a good coach. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Ron, uh, Ron Rivera right now and the way he handles this team. So, uh, we'll see how they do. But, again, my prediction is only 8-8. Eight and eight. This is Washington. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Brittany Grinder, she got convicted last week. No surprise. Um, the prosecutors were looking for – Nine, nine and a half, oh, I guess they're looking for nine and a half years, and so she's already been in for six months, and so they slapped on nine on top of that, so I think there's going to be some type of exchange going on amongst prisoners, or what are your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, the the first thought on that whole thing is to, to bring weed into Russia. You don't know anything about that land and its laws, so doing that, that was bad on her part. Uh Nine and a half years, I think, is excessive. But again, this ain't America we're talking about. This is Russia we're talking about. And if that's the way they handle it, that's the way they handle it. Uh, I think they're going to work on a prisoner exchange, you know, some way, some shape or form. We'll have to release somebody big because she is somewhat of a celebrity. So they're going to have to get somebody big back. It's just a question of who. 
True, true. I was uh, I was watching a segment earlier today. Um, this is one of the guys who this actually got out of Russia on a prisoner exchange or whatever. And so uh, you know, he was basically saying, he's like, you know what? People who normally get that kind of offense over there get no more than time served two years tops. So he was like, this is definitely a, uh, they're using her as a political pawn. I'm Absolutely. Sure. So this is somebody who's spent two years in, uh, well, actually, no, he spent uh, three years um, in the Russian penal colony over there, actually. So they call them Russian penal colonies now, but, you know, basically it's a gulag. It, it's a forced labor yeah. camp. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one place you don't want to be. <laughs> oh, absolutely, and that's yeah. And and forgive me, I didn't mean to say she was stupid. It was just a you know everybody makes mistakes, and what she did, you know, I think she wasn't really savvy on what could go on and how maybe how big her name is, and she got caught up in the situation now. You know, right. so I hope they are able to get get her back because for the offense, the the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Yeah, but again, I'm I'm looking at this through a, a United States of America lens, not a Russian lens. And you know, sure, uh, I get it. Political games like this, you know, that's way above my pay grade. And the Russians play political ge political games just as well as anybody does. Amen to that. So, yep, you know, it is so. what it is. I hope she gets out soon. So, um, I'm. Uh, in, in terms of women in pro in, in professional sports. Um, you know, basketball in particular. Well, you know, I want to say, well, I'm going to say women's pro sports in general. Um, sure. And, you know, like a lot of women have to go play overseas to supplement their income because they don't get paid nearly as much as the men do. And we're not talking, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. We're talking tens of millions of dollars. Um, so, do you think a conversation um, needs to be had in terms of how we market women's sports for one, and um, I, because, I mean, they put in just as much time and effort as their male counterparts do. And um, yeah, maybe they may not get the big sponsors, but there's still quite a bit of money coming in when it comes to women's professional sports, whether it's basketball, um, you know, soccer's a big one. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? I actually do think a, a conversation needs to be held on the mar marketing aspect of all female sports because marketing is what's going to put butts in the seats and that's ultimately what's determining their salaries right now. Yeah, you know, they're not filling up they're not filling up stadiums like they should or, or arenas like they should like they're capable of doing but with the right marketing push i mean you know you see every other commercial if you watch tv which i don't during the summer but every other commercial nba this playoffs this all-star game that i mean it's constant it's in your face but you barely see any ads for the wnba you know there we have to do something to make those uh those young ladies that play in those sports put their names out there make them big you know Get a couple of young ladies that can dunk, you know, dunk during the game, make the game a little more exciting, you know, because that's all part of a marketing push. You know, they have very, very competitive games. I know that. But, you know, is the NBA really about being competitive until you get to the playoffs or is it about, you know, highlight reels? I think you probably hit on something there. And these days it's all about highlight reels in the long ball because nobody really seems to, you know, be that involved or pays that much attention to fundamentals. And if you look at the women's game, I mean, it's it's all fundamentals because they may not have the athletic skill set as their male counterparts do. But I mean, they play just as hard and I think they play better fundamental basketball than, uh, than the men do. That's just my opinion. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. And I think that's why the games are more competitive than, you know, uh, male NBA games because they're using those fundamentals. You know, they're actually, the referees actually, you know, go by the rule book, you know, so you can get called for a foul or a travel or something like that. So, I mean, these games, they're playing their hearts out out there and they deserve, you know, more money than what they're getting. But, you know, marketing has to get in there and do their job and really do their job to bring this league up to par in terms of, you know, uh, having names out there, you know. Right.